All right, so um, like I said, welcome. I'm Lieutenant Junior Gray Roberts. I'm the main propulsion assistant on board USS Greeley here in Everett. Um, I went through the LDO program as a surface engineer. Um, I, I was a prior GSM-1. I went from E1 to E6 in about six years. I knew that I had to be at eight years when the board hit. So as soon as I hit GSM-1, I, I, in six months, I had to eat right quick, get that number one EP, say low the year, say low the quarter, say low the strike group. Uh, put that in my package along with my degree, MOBSM, things like that. Um, did a lot of community service. And I put my package in the first time I got picked up. And it's been a journey. It's been real. I did my first six years in Japan, USS Curtis Wilbur, USS McCampbell. And then I went over to a CG and did a CG-59 Princeton. Now I'm on another DDG. And I got orders going to LHD. My first team, I think, is the, the Cure Sarge. I'll be going over there to be the repo. So something different. Uh, things are changing, but uh, I had a lot of great mentors and a lot of great leaders to follow. So that's kind of my path. I, I've had my own set of challenges that we'll, we'll talk about, but I want us to introduce ourselves so we know, you kind of know our background, okay? So if you have questions, please put it in the chat box if you have specific questions and we'll try, like I said, we'll try to get to everything. All right, Rebecca, what you got? All right, um, I'll say a short version of my background is um, I'm prior enlisted. I used to be a foreman, um, HM1, so I started off as a dental assistant. Um, I moved to physical therapy. I've been stationed in Okinawa and Yokosuka, um, so I've been in Japan for quite a bit as well. Um, I commissioned at my 11-year mark with my um, master's of social work, and I commissioned via um, MSCIPP, that's the Medical Service Corps in-service procurement program. Um, and I just reached two years um, post commission, and so I'm going to be heading over to Iwakuni. Um, so that's a short version. I'm sure we'll kind of get into some of the, the meat and potatoes as we're having the conversation. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions just so they kind of, we're going to get some things flowing. Um, I want to ask you, like, why, like, why did you join the Navy? Like, why did you join the military? What was uh, your, your purpose? What was your reason? Yeah, my, honestly, my number one reason for joining the military was to pay for college. And so um, for if I leave the military today, then I absolutely got what I came for. So I'm actually really happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I had a scholarship initially. I come from the inner city. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Things were pretty bad where I was from. Um, I had a scholarship, but I had to turn it away due to some things happening in my household. And I, I went a year kind of working and just living, and I knew like that wasn't what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't want to be in Cleveland and be like everyone that was kind of in my surroundings. And so uh, when I found out that the Navy would, you know, help to pay for school, I was like, I'm going to do it. And so I didn't know much about it. I had, my dad was in the Army, but we're not connected, but I knew of someone in the military being with my dad um, and my uncle was in the army, but I had never really heard about the Navy or anything. And I just showed up to the recruiter's office. And again, he kind of, he offered that education and that's what I wanted. So that's why I joined. I think a lot of people, I say everybody raise your hand who came in because they wanted to go to pay for education. I'm just kind of looking around kind of, you can raise your hand like who came in because hey, I just wanted to go to school, like pay for school. And I think a lot of us, because like me, I thought like I was going to come in and just go to school. No, <laughs> no, you didn't get your East Wash pin. You got to get qualified. Now you ain't got time. Oh, and you got deployment. And you got to do this, that, and the third. And it's like, I did not start my degree until two, three, four, five years in. And you see a lot of sailors that re enlist because it's like, I don't want to get out with less than I came with. Yeah. I don't want to get out with nothing. I tell everybody that's on the screen right now if you are planning to get out, if you feel like, you know, it is tough. Truck, do not get out with nothing. I know I'm from Texas, baby. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Third, like, you know, Texas is, is the place. You know what I'm saying? I read very hard. Texas is where it's at. But we got the Hazelwood at that when we do um, those those four years of service, they pay for um, our college. So we got the Hazelwood. Out. I think Pennsylvania got something. Chicago got something like that. And I think Cali has something for when um, your kids, if you are in the service, they pay for your kids' college. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it's I think it's dope that there's different things in place for when you do your service because people know even right now as an LDO I'm still working on my bachelor's and I feel like I've been working on it for forever and it's hard to not quit because you're like man I've been in school my friends did it in three or four years I've been in school forever you know and inspections don't stop in serve don't stop TMI don't stop TV all these inspections do not stop and I'll tell you later my story when the the military gave me a bad surgery and it put me down for three years I couldn't really walk 
the walk to where I run, Rebecca was actually my physical therapist at the time, trying to get back on my feet. They gave me a bad, I rolled my um, ankle and they gave me a surgery playing volleyball, played volleyball and basketball. So um, I had an inspection and, and it was tough getting back on my feet, but I worked at legal and I saw their program, legal men, for two hours of the day, they shut down the office to do their homework. Really? I was like, what? Girl, I was so shocked. As a legal man, they have to get their paralegal. Brianna over there giving a thumbs up. They have to get this degree. So they shut down for two hours of their work day to That's do amazing. school. You have to let them. It's like, so I was looking around like, why everybody don't have this? It is a benefit in the LA community. And I was like, this super dope. So I actually kind of implement it as a leader because I know that it's parts of the time in the day where I have my junior say, was like, come talk, let's talk about education. Let's talk about this because I can't implement something like that, but I can give that time to be like, hey, I want to talk budget. Let's talk, let's do something that involves your personal life as a leader. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But no, the alien community, they, ha they, they, they over there getting it in. So alien one, I see you. <laughs> but I, I asked you that question because everybody that's on this line right now, you have a why. You have a why. Can you use that why to keep you motivated during the package process? Because everybody don't get, I'm going to be real, everybody don't get selected the first time. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't get picked up the first time. And sometimes it's to see if you're going to put your package in again and again mm -hmm. and again. Like, how many times did it take you? How many packages did you put in? I put in two. Um, yeah, but honestly, that first time, I, I almost felt like defeated. I almost didn't want to do it because there was a whole slew of like adversity just with the first package that I put in. But you're absolutely right when you say, you know, you have to know your why. Like for me, it was like, okay, I, I joined the Navy for this. So if I'm going to give up and not do this package again, yeah, I'm still being in the Navy. I'm still doing my job. I'm still pushing out sailors and I'm doing everything that the Navy wants me to do why would I not do what, what I came here for? So you're absolutely right. Like my yeah. why is what kept me going. And that's, and, and that's what I want everybody to take from this. If you don't get the right mentorship, leadership, you feel like you don't have the right resources, your why should keep you from stopping. I don't care what you've been through. Um, I kind of dip into this later on, but my personal story, I'm a speaker and coach, a motivational life transformation speaker and coach outside, and I'm a Me Too advocate because what I overcame in my childhood, it, I use that to push me because mm -hmm. I take care of mama and grandmama. You know, they, my grandmama want to go to the dollar store every week. She want to go to the grocery store every week. That, that's a part of my why. You know, so my grandmama calls, she don't understand that we don't get paid every day. She just want what she wants. So um, that why keeps me going when I face sexism, racism, not having the right mentorship and leadership. I can't expect everybody to treat me equal. I can't ever expect everybody to treat me right. I can't expect everybody to help me. I can't expect everybody to point me in the right direction. If you accept that now, you won't quit. You won't stop. You'll keep putting that package in because it's what you want. If you ask yourself right now, have you gave your package 100% because your why is counting on that? Your know, why is a part of why, like, you're not just putting it in. Everybody say, oh, do it for the money. It's more than the money. If you do it for the money, you'll be miserable on this side. Okay. Being the officer is different expectations. James nodded his head. It's different expectations on this side. That money sometimes don't feel worth it, but my why is what makes it worth it. Mm -hmm. My why is what makes it worth it because it is struggle. It is a struggle. And I'll say, you know, from my personal experience, you know, as an LDO, they say Mustangs, Untamable. You know, I got my first uh, LOI. Uh, within a year or two of being on the ship and it was because like I, I in the war in the wardroom out of 47 I'm the only African-American so something I have my demeanor how I may come off what I may say what I am for and what I'm not I can't shift and change that this is who I am and it, you won't always fit in don't do it to fit in you won't fit in sometimes you're going to be put in a room where you do not fit in and as the officer that's prior enlisted it is expected that you speak out towards that it is expected that you help though 11 tens the state 21s those who came with direct commissioning and they haven't experienced the enlisted i remember i used to tell them i'm gonna be real with y'all as divos when y'all got in front of me as firemen robbers i don't want to hear what y'all have to say are you the same age as me making more money than me because you was able to go to school I'm, my mama couldn't put me through school i came out the brick like we couldn't do it 
I said it. I'm not going to lie to you. I came in the Navy because I had to, not because I really wanted to. I was in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So it was different. I acted up my junior and senior year. I was varsity basketball, volleyball, did track. And then I started making bad decisions, hanging around the wrong people, trying to make money. Because you get to a point where, like, your mama and daddy and grandma can't do it. You got to make it. And that's, that's how I look at the military sometimes. Like, it's a hustle. You have to make sure that you, you, it's a hustle. You got to get out there and get it, especially in times like this. And I say, like, if you need appraisals or recommendations, you're going to be doing it on Zoom. Don't let nobody turn you away. Yeah. Zoom. Yeah. Zoom appraisals. No, Zoom no, recommendations. Make them happen. Like, yeah. Make it happen. Like with your schedule, do you still have people that's putting in packages? Like how are they doing uh, for, for your job? I know y'all don't stop. Y'all first responders. I know work hasn't just stopped for you. Yeah, we, we've transitioned our whole, so I'm a therapist, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a, phys or physical, I'm, um, I'm a social worker and I, I work primarily in mental health. And so um, the way that we shifted was we, we used Zoom. We Initially, we started off with Zoom, but then there was a lot of stuff that came out with HIPAA and stuff. And we actually use Skype and I still meet with patients every day via Skype because like she said, you know, the show doesn't stop. And, you know, we're speaking on regard to the package, but as an example, again, my, my everyday job, like, we're still working and then that shows me that there's still an ability for you to reach out and get what you need to have done too. Because when I think about my patients, like it's in their hands, they can choose if they want to sit in front of a screen or they can choose not to, but it's, it's so refreshing to see that these people are saying, you know what, this is my life and I'm going to take control of that. And although this isn't, you know, ideal, this isn't what I thought I was going to get. I'm still yep. going to come and get what I can. Yep. And I think that the same thing can absolutely happen when you say like with appraisals and interviews and things like that. I love it. I love it. Um, my next question was like, you said like, is your why, like what kept you going through adversity? Cause officers not the only one who go through adversity. I'm sure everybody on here probably have had a challenge as enlisted. Like you've had some, who I, I'm going to tell you from E1 to E6 every year, I said I was going to get out I, I'm like, <laughs> every, every year. And I'm here right now. Every year I said I was going to get out. I don't know if you can attest to that, but I'm going to let you, I'm going to be real with you. Every year I said I was going to get out. But when that door comes, when that anxiety hits, when you didn't plan, when you didn't read, when you didn't go to taps two or three, four times, it, like you need, you can't get taps. You can't. I love how the transition of getting out is now because I feel like now you're not just being thrown away. You're not yeah. even like, oh, you want to get out? I'm going to give you bad orders. I'm not going to care about how you do, what you got going on, but I'm actually going to put time into your transition process. Because guess what? I don't care if you're not a stable anymore. I don't care if you're not acting no more. I care because you're a human and you decided to pay your dues. Yeah. You decided to pay your dues. So like what keeps you going through adversity? What are some things like you use to keep you through adversity? Um, yeah, I'll, again, kind of the why. So I, I, speak, I actually, some people um, actually saw me because I put out a YouTube video about like my enlisted to officer journey. Um, and, and within that journey, there was so much adversity. Um, I would say not only kind of personally, but also within my, like my leadership, like I had chains of command that um, the biggest thing initially, again, was education. And you kind of spoke on that. Like I, it, for me, it was a slap in the face to know that I had to show up to a command and not be allowed to utilize TA right away. And I, I realized that's the Navy policy, so that wasn't personal toward me. Um, but again, remembering my why. So when I showed up to my first command and they told me I couldn't use TA, it was a slap in the face. But then I found out that I can go ahead and use, um, what is it, my like financial aid. Yeah, um, yeah. So I went ahead and I applied for financial aid and I was able to go to school. And so that was kind of an adversity that I overcame because and my chain of command was surprised. So when I turned in this eval and it's like, oh, I finished three classes and I've been there for however long I've been there. And they're like, wait, how? And they're like, we didn't improve CA. And I'm like, I know you didn't. However, <laughs> I, I did it anyway. I found a way, baby. I found a way. Yeah. So I think for me, my determination, because I, one thing that I don't let people tell me is no. Like for me, that is, if, if there's go. something yeah. that I want to do, no one is ever going to be able to tell me that I can't do it. I'm going to find a way to make it happen. And that's yeah. just who I am. And yeah. so yeah. That, that first adversity was that, but I overcame by pushing through and getting CA, um, some more of, or, you know, getting financial aid. Um, I'm, as I'm moving up in the ranks, the next adversity for me was actually, um, it was extremely difficult for me to make um, second class and first class. For some reason, third class is easy for me because I, I guess I was fresh out of school. Second class is difficult. 
Um, and so my chain of command actually like told me that I couldn't go to school anymore because I, I had so much college classes under my belt because that's what was my why, that's what I was doing. Um, but then I was told that I couldn't go to school because I needed to make first, or excuse me, I needed to make second at the time. And so um, what, so what happened, you mentioned earlier, I think when everyone was offline, but because I'm going to Iwakuni and it's kind of a challenge for me right now, and you mentioned how sometimes you can be put in a place um, that kind of sits you down and, and yeah, creates the yeah. opportunity. Um, for me, that happened to be, I got deployed to Afghanistan. Um, and I was very scared. I never wanted to deploy at all. I, I was already frustrated about the school situation. So I'm like, here I am doing something for you all, like the command, you know, doing something for y'all going to Afghanistan. Uh, but then I learned that in Afghanistan, I had a temporary chain of command who loved education and the idea of education. Mm -hmm. So while I was there, although my parent command said no to my education, my current Afghanistan command said, yeah, you know, do it as long as you pass, you know, as long as you show that you're doing well, uh, we'll continue to give you TA. And so while I was in Afghanistan, I literally did four classes at a time on top of doing everything that I was doing while I was deployed, but I utilized that time. I was deployed for, I think, 10 or 11 months or something like that, but I utilized that time, and every semester, I was doing four, three to four classes, um, mm -hmm. and, like, that, again, that was kind of my determination. Oh. I was like, okay, if I can't do it where I'm stationed at, then I'm gonna do it where I'm at right now, yeah. and so, again, coming back to my, like, when I came back from deployment, and I'm turning in my eval, and they're like, what's all of this? I'm like, I told you how it was going to happen. <laughs> I, I told y'all I was out here executing. Yeah. I'm the roadblock. I'm going to run it over. I'm Absolutely. trying to take it over. <laughs> so another check in the box, you know, overcoming that adversity. Um, fast forward to another command, and now I'm in grad school. And these things are, so that's like my associate, then my bachelor's, and now I'm in grad school. When I'm in grad school, you know, my, my adversity became because I was going to school, but I was also doing an internship. And so because I was dedicating technically more hours to school in my internship, the adversity was that my divo at the time um, felt like I needed to put in a chit to work a second job because of the hours that I was putting into my education. Um, and so that was a huge thing. And it was really, for me, disheartening because um, I'm actually a very quiet person and I, I'm, I'm, I really don't like any sort of, I don't like to like ruffle feathers. Like I'm really like that okay. follow the rules type of person. Yeah. Um, and so for me, that was extremely difficult, but that gave me an opportunity to advocate for myself because I was like, there's no way that I've made it to this point um, and to give up now because by then my ultimate goal was to become a social worker. And again, and if you know about me, then you know if I create a goal for myself, it's, it's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. And so my ultimate goal was to, you know, be a social worker. And I'm like, I can't stop now just because she's giving me like this roadblock. Yeah. And so, you know, it went up the chain of command and I did what I needed to do, but ultimately I was able to graduate. Um, and so I've had, again, a lot of adversity, but those are for me the three that stick out the most because they specifically relate to being in the Navy and kind of having an unsupportive um, structure around me, but yeah. still finding a way to like make it happen because and that's I what I wanted to do. A lot of people, Rebecca, one thing that you keep saying is find a way, guys, like whatever roadblock you have right now, find a way to overcome that roadblock. If you can't find people to give you appraisals, there's at least... I know I'm a part of probably six or seven officer communities where if you're looking for somebody to give you an appraisal, give you a recommendation, get into those groups. If your CO knows somebody, your XO knows somebody, your CMC knows somebody, your department head knows somebody. I don't care how you feel about somebody personally. Sometimes you got to put them emotions to the side so you can get out here and eat. So yeah. you can get out here and get into the room and sit at the table, put those personal emotions to the side, do what you got to do to execute. If you allow your emotions to stop you, guess what? We got to stop pointing the finger at leadership and start pointing the finger if you allowing leadership to stop you. So one thing I respect, Rebecca, is like, I've known you. We, we went from Japan. We went to Chicago. And you stay in school. And I can tell you, I used to be insecure because I used to be like, man, all my friends got degrees and I'm excelling in the military, but I don't have my degree. And that was the big thing for where I come from. Like my brother is the only one in my family that has a degree, you know? And so it was big for me, like every out of my community where I come from the hood, I'm gonna be real. Like everybody don't even finish high school. Everybody don't just go to college. My mama put me in a community and put me in an environment to make sure that I excel. And I felt like I did it because I, 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 when I came into the military, when you sell education, they don't say six classes a year. 
Yeah. They don't say how many hours. You're depending on TA or what you have going on. So I think it is very important that you like figure it out. And I, I, t, um, I TSC, like I see, like it, it, it is tough when you are the only African American. Somebody H and one asked me being the only uh, African American in the wardrobe. I finally got my brother. Um, uh, he's a IP IP cyber a cyber cyber. He's a cyber officer. But is how I advocate for my sailors is I show them how to not just educate, but also how to come together. Because as a leader right now, like you can't just say anything, do anything. You got to show up. How you show up for your sailors? I make sure I'm their voice. I make sure I can relate. I make sure I bring their ideas to the wardrobe. And one thing I tell you, when you come over to this other side as an ensign, um, I don't care what somebody has told you, you don't get to pick all the time where you're going. I had a brother and, and James Smiler right now, but I had one of my brothers, he's like, my wife, my kids, EFM, they can't just go anywhere. The detailer told him, your family don't have to go. That's the, that's the part of this side everybody don't tell you, and that's being real. Your family does not always have to go. Your kids will not always be able to go. Your, your wife, your husband will not always be able to go, and you have to be ready to make that decision. And that's why we want to have this real talk, because everybody don't tell you that it's not, just because you're an officer don't mean you get a privilege in picking orders. Really, they feel like because the way they pay you, you're going to take what they give you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm in that situation exactly right now. That's yeah, kind of yeah. Talk about it a little bit. My family is going to be here in the states, and I'm going to be in Iwakuni. And you know, this is my third time going to Japan. I'm, I'm not. This is not my first rodeo. So, yeah, I, th yeah. I think we both. When he told me, when he asked me about my orders, he was like, "Hey, pick. This is a slate of fifty. And I was like, "Man, I got a slate of fifty because as GSM one, I got one billet." Like one or two billets, maybe. If a, I saw what really made me cross over too is I saw as you got higher on the enlisted, billets started like shrinking. Mm -hmm. Like chief, senior chief, master chief, you don't have no billets. You're getting told like this is what you're going to do. And I was like, hold the gas, <laughs> hold it up now. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for that. But on this side, it is the same. I was like, I want to go to Japan, Spain, Hawaii. I'm single. I don't have kids. Like, let me go be great. And he was like. Oh, bet. Welcome to Washington, Seattle, Everett Base, DDG 101. I was like, huh? Why even ask me if you know? I want to have a kid. I'm starting a family. Yeah. I was like, if you knew you wasn't going to give me what I asked for, why, why even do it? But that's the call. I was like, it's a basic Everett. Like, of course, like I said, from E1 to E6, y'all, I spent all my time in Japan. I had a wake up call because I thought the rest of the Navy would like Japan. So I came to the ship. And we was in port for 18 months. I was like, I don't understand why we're not underway. I don't understand why people are not qualified. I don't understand why it's not go, go, go. I don't get it. And so it was an adjustment. But one thing I learned was once I crossed over the excuse of like, there is no, well, this is what you once told me. No, this is where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. And and if you put in the package right now, understand that when you come over to the other side, just being an officer don't give you more benefits. It, it does in a sense, but don't think that you're just going to, now I can dictate where I want to go. Now you're going to go where they need you to go. Well, I asked this time, I, I was just like, hey, I, didn't, I want to stay away from steam. Where I'm going, I'm going to steam because that's where they need you right now. <laughs> And uh, before we bring the conversation too far into like life as an officer now, I do want to hear from you and like any adversity you experienced as you were putting in your package. And especially because I'm not super familiar with like the LDO route. Um, what was some adversity that you overcame? I think the, no lie, um, the adversity that I had to deal with was like, I didn't see myself. Like people said, why are you going LDO? And, and this is not a, a, a race, it's, it's not the, the, the conversation of not seeing myself in there, but I didn't see myself. I didn't see a lot of African-American officers. I didn't see a lot of African-American chiefs yet. I didn't see my first female master chief till I came to the States. Mm. I didn't see the female department head until um, I went to the ship that, I, that I'm on now. I didn't see females in the wardroom. I didn't see African-American females. We, everybody knew Master Chief Shalinda Miller. Everybody knew Master Chief Beldo. Those people that you didn't have access to, but you saw them. And then Admiral Baker came around. And I was just like, man, I want to sit at the table where decisions are made. And so it was tough because 
everybody was just telling me like, oh, you you just put in the package and you're going to make it because you're a black female. No, I'm going to make it because I'm intelligent. I'm going to make it because I'm going to go hard in the paint. I'm going to make it because my package is going to be solid. I'm going to make it because I'm going to do everything I have to do and not just because of the color of my skin or, or, or my background. So I think that was the biggest challenge is I wanted to go against statistics. Yeah. Like I wanted to go against the grit and I was I still had deployment. I was LPO of a division. I was on a CG. You know what I'm saying? So I was didn't always make it. And, and I remember I coordinated a blood drive for the peer, like multiple shifts. I got with the other first class petty officers, like, y'all, let's come together and like make this a thing. Mm -hmm. And that got me a lot of exposure. And I had certain people just reach out to me that wanted to help me. There's not a lot of people out there that will reach out to you when they see what it is you're aiming for. So yeah. don't don't always feel like somebody won't talk to you. Admiral Baker, um, Admiral, no. Admiral Tyson, two star, invited me to her house. Wow. She was Admiral Tyson. I'll never forget that she invited me to her house. She was uh, married. I think he's a master chief. He's a retired master chief, and she didn't have no kids. And she was just like, I see, I can see you get into this place if you keep doing what you're doing because you actually care about sailors. You care about what you're wow. doing. And when she told me that, it opened my mind because a lot of the female admirals, she was like, most of two or three of them, we're retiring, we're getting out. And she was like, are you training up your relief? So for me, it's like, who am I relieving? And then now it's who's relieving me? Who am I being trained by and who am I training up? So if you think you're just gonna cross over and the work stops, you have to train up those that's gonna replace you because you just replace somebody trusting you to do what it is that we're supposed to do, just not just as humans, not just as sailors, not just as officers, but just like somebody sees you and they see themselves. You know, and, and my story is out there. Like I told people, I'm a survivor of child molestation. So I've got, you know, people who was like, man, I, want, I wanted to commit suicide. I've been sexually assaulted. I've been mentally abused. At home, I'm going through this because my story is a little open sometimes to the world. So people feel more relational to come to me. You know, when they're struggling in their, you know, departments or divisions. And I saw that as a GSM-1. So that was my biggest struggle was like, will I uh, amount to the person that I'm, I, that people see me as now, mm -hmm. and can I maneuver in the enlisted world? Because from a master chief or a senior chief or a chief come at your neck, they're supposed to. If an officer do it, you might end up on Navy Toms. You may end up on CNN. You cannot maneuver the same way in the wardroom as you do on the enlisted side. And that was my biggest learning lesson: is you yeah. cannot talk to sailors, treat sailors, talk like. In the war, it's not the same because now you got that officer stamp on you. You yeah. got that officer stamp. You got to come a different way. And, and that was my hardest when I asked you, like, adversity, um, mm -hmm. it was my why. But two, it was like, now I'm transitioning to the unknown. Yeah. And, you know, and with that, like, when you say that, I feel the same way. But for me, I haven't, I don't think that I've experienced it as much just yet with that particular example, because mm -hmm. I don't have sailors, because right now I'm like seeing patients and I'm a provider. So we're kind of like, I mean, we, we had this conversation offline about kind of, we, we are two different types of officers. And so kind of with, with your sailors, you kind of experience that. And then for me, like with my patients, I experience it. And like kind of actually having to have like that boundary that I'm not extremely used to because, you know, I was a first class as well. So I'm an LPO, you know, I'm used to like interacting, really getting to know my sailors, really getting to get into like the weeds of what's going on and then also taking action. And I think that that's the piece that as an officer I can do, but I have to do differently because then I'm, if I do it now, I'm like, I'm undercutting other, you know, chains of commands and other leaders that are supposed to be doing it. And then especially if they're not doing it, then it looks even worse because I'm doing things that they should do. And technically I shouldn't be doing that. Um, so for me, that's definitely a challenge because I am so used to being such a hands-on leader. And I, you know, I know that there's a balance and I know that there's a way that I can eventually do it, but I just haven't, quite navigated that yet and then definitely like I say once I start to actually have sailors of my like that work under me then I'll be able to to you know mm -hmm. fine-tune it a little bit more but that was definitely something that I had to get used to like I can't just walk up to the sailor and say what's going on yep, and yep, change yep. Their life. <laughs> like, I gotta end up quick because I was a first class so I was like man first I was like I remember what I feel like as a first class so I'm gonna make sure they Gucci I see them snatch me up quick come here <laughs> they like uh -uh, watch, watch what you do watch how you do it because now you're opposite it when you thought 
your your chief when you first got on board and they say well perception is what it is perception is like 99.999 percent of how everything looks from the wardrobe mm -hmm. and i had to say that uh there was that jay asked how do you recommend uh touch touching racism with your junior sailors it is a hard one is it a difficult subject right now especially what's going on it's difficult it's hard but it has to happen if you're a leader it's necessary yeah. It is necessary. I don't care what you look like. It's about educating and understanding. You don't have to look like what's going on. You don't have to look like me to educate. Being the only black, I have, between the wardrobe and the chief mess right now, there's only three of us. Mm -hmm. And we got in front of, diff I went to different divisions. It was like, this is what's going on. This is how I feel personally. This is how you, you know, you're going to have people around you to feel. It's okay to be in your bubble. It's okay to feel. It's okay to have emotions. This is what you can and can't do in uniform. I don't want you, you can't be bashing and posting and sharing memes of Trump. Like, we know what we can do. And you have to educate based on facts. You yeah. can't lead off opinions. You have your feelings. You have your emotions. Your sailors have feelings and emotions too. But you have to teach them factual. You have to teach them facts. This is what you can and can't do, and this is how you can express yourself. But we won't be fighting up in here. Now, my, yeah. my engineer, I can't control it, but engineering the world, we're going to be like this. You, you know? know, and as a leader, you have to speak up. And I told my other divos and my department heads, you may be uncomfortable to say something, but if, if you need me there with you, I got you. You may be uncomfortable if somebody brings something to you. So that's leadership is saying, hey, listen, I know you may be uncomfortable talking about this because you can't relate because you don't understand, but I'm here to help you. I'm here to teach you. I'm going to lead with you. I'm not upset with you. I understand that this is a world thing. This is a society thing. It's not just a, a black and white thing. So let's educate. Let's teach divisions. Talk about it. And to me, I feel like if you talk about something, that gives me access to talk about it with you. Exactly. When I get in front of my department and I talk about it, now they feel open. But if you just come to work like ain't nothing happened, they going to suppress it. Yeah. You don't know who dealing, like, this is one of the things, I'm going to give y'all 10 things for y'all package later on. But one of the things is like mental awareness, a health. You are human. I don't care how robotic, your mental health and your mental awareness is real. Because now when you cross over to the wardroom, it's no longer about you. Mm -hmm. It is no longer, you take you completely out of the equation and your you time is your personal time. When you in uniform now, it's all about the mission. It's all about what the CO want, XO want, what Alma so-and-so want and what your department needs. I don't care what you're going through, that CO expect your department to succeed in everything. Yeah. So for me, it's to burning and turning. But as an engineer, that's what he wants. He wants to make sure he can light off on time. He don't care what I got going on mentally. Mm -hmm. And that's just the nature of the beast. When you cross over, be prepared and understand that you have to be aware of where you are mentally. Know that the crossing over is not about a dollar sign, y'all. A lot of people in here probably go, oh, I just want to make more money. It's it, you, mm, the risk. <laughs> you got to weigh the it's risk of what you get into. Yeah. Have a different type of why than the money because the money may get you the to, to quit on this side. The money may get you to give in. It, it's, you, can't, you, you, you can't just make it about the money or you will be miserable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what James, James said. Hey, James will tell you, man, if it's just about the money, you'll be miserable because over here, if you think you don't matter now, you may get that feeling over here because everything is about everything around you instead of what is within you. Yeah. Do, do, do you feel that? Did you get that? Because you say you don't have sailors now, so now it's just... You with the, I mean, you know, y'all medical, y'all are the big leaders, you know what I'm saying? So you, you deal with a lot of people that you work for, or yeah. is it like across the board? Like how, how was that transition to go from like HM1 and now you yeah. still feel like at the bottom of the totem pole? I, well, okay. So especially right now, because I'm in like an internship program, so I have a lot of peers, but um, my peer, I, I initially started my internship program as an ensign, and because I'm a social worker, so we are like already kind of a really, really small population and an even bigger population of um, mental health providers. Um, and so all of my peers came in as lieutenants and I came in as an ensign. So mm -hmm. for me, that was already, we kind of spoke about kind of no longer being about us like that. For me, that was one thing that was already like, okay, I am the only ensign in the, in the equation. I'm the only social worker, so I have a different level of education than everyone. Um, than everyone else. Um, and so when I came in, although it was supposed to be kind of an equal playing field, it definitely felt like there was some sort of like hierarchy there. 
Yeah. And so um, that was really difficult because I, you know, I already knew at the instant I was kind of going to be on like the proverbial, like bottom of the totem pole, you know, but I thought that also that I was going to be kind of equal amongst my peers and it didn't feel that way um, because of like the nature of my job. And so um, I'm not necessarily like, I don't answer to any of my peers, but there is kind of like this weird, like hierarchy situation Bye. going on. Yeah. And then also, um, I do have like, uh, and then also in the department that I work in, I work with a lot of um, civilians. And so again, it kind of like, I've really been uprooted from, you know, being in the weeds of like really being in the hospital and being in the, the Navy and kind of being in the sailor. Um, to now it's like, I have a lot of civilian peers or I have peers that are other, again, other interns that are, are different because they're psychiatrists and psychologists. And so um, for me, honestly, it's, it's really just all new it's, it's a lot different from um what i've come what i was doing and then also what i expected but I, again it could also be because i'm in this internship and so i'm good. going to my first real duty station mm, next you good. know my next duty station and so it might be different and that's sure because i think i had a lot of it's and that's for all those who go on ip i had them in my class and they thought like Oh, I'm going to go short duty, short duty, short duty. That's the expectation. Or mm -hmm. I had a lot of admin officers as well. That was like short duty, short duty. And then like, like, no, nah, you finna go to a ship. Like they got orders like, boom, ship after school, boom, boom, boom. They got that ship. And it's crazy how in the officer world, you know, you get orders and the enlisted side, in the officer world, it's like a word of mouth thing. Like, oh no, your orders just changed yesterday. What, yeah. What you, what you mean? I'm yeah. Josh shaking his head because he know like it's a, it's easy to shift. I'm telling you, you can think you're going to short duty or think you know. I have officers now where their families are staying put because at the last minute their order shifted and now yeah. they got to go without their family. Well, that's me because I thought for a long time for for nine, you know, we know we negotiate orders at the one year mark, you know, like enlisted as well. Um, and so from the one year mark and nine months after that, I'm thinking that I'm going to Florida. And so my family is making plans to go to Florida. And then lo and behold, three months ago, it's like, oh, no, no, you're not. We need to, we need to see you overseas. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, we already talked about this. I got a family. I got businesses. I got oh, everything. Like, oh, you want to be in the Navy or you want to run your business? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's a plug. You're looking at two women and they've had, oh, I'm a CEO, baby. She a CEO of <laughs> Like I said, I, I have a business called IME, uh, Impact, Aspire, Motivate. And like I said, I'm a speaker, coach, courses. I'm an author of a book, two, two books. Um, and then Rebecca has Elaine Essentials. And it's, it's like, uh, you'll hear me ping on this later about personal goals. Just mm -hmm. because you wear a uniform don't mean you can't have a vision outside of uniform. If you want to do something, go do it. You just have to make sure you manage your time doing it. Yeah. You got to make sure that you, to me, it's easier to be in the military because when I'm not at work, I got other stuff to do. Mm -hmm. I got a business to run. I got people to connect with. I'm doing like when I'm not at work, I'm happy because this is not the only thing that consumes me. Mm -hmm. I'm actually doing other things. I, most of my friends, they beauticians, they got their own hair salons, they barbers, they do wigs, hair, whatever you want to do, baby. It's a business out there for it. Cause I got people do construction. It does not matter. You got to have something personal that you're, that you're building so that you don't just feel consumed by the military, you know what yeah. I mean? So you you can, I'm not going to talk about what a typical work day for goes. Um, Jay, is that for me or for Rebecca? It looks like it does say both. What a typical work day goes. I'll, let, I'll wait for her to answer it um, while she's answering that if she want both or me or you. Uh, my next question, and, and, and while we're talking, like we, we're saying this real talk because we want to be transparent, but being an officer is dope. I'm not going to lie because I like being in a room where the decisions is happening. Mm -hmm. I like being in a room where when the CEO can come up to me and ask me a question and he takes my buy-in. You got buy-in. And yeah. I told you when I did my um, LDO board, they say, why you want to be an officer, why should we choose you? I want to be at the table where decisions are made. Mm -hmm. I want to be at the table. You know what I'm saying? I want to be, look around the room and know that like, I may be the only one up in here, but I'm part of this decision. <laughs> I, I'm part of what's going on and what's happening. And as, as an officer, that's the dope part of it is you're part of decision making. You're part of planning now. You know, I, I rocks with, with all my leadership, but 
I got into an era where it was like, okay, my CEO didn't give the chief mess as much power or as much access as I grew up in where the, it was the, the chief mess and had a lot of like, chief said, that's it. I got into an era where it was like, I go ask my chief and my chief say, hold on, let me go ask the divo. And I got into that era and I was like, well, if the chiefs are now going to ask the divo, let me go to the other side. Like, I want to be, where's the final decision at? Yeah. Where's the, like the last decision? Where does that happen? I want to get there. That was my why. So it was important to me. Like it is, it does feel good when you can fight for a sailor mm -hmm. and it's cause you got that direct access to the captain. Yeah. You got that direct access to the CMC. You know, you got that direct access to the XO and they take your buy-in. Don't let nobody confuse COs and XOs or not COs and XOs because they're perfect because they know it all. But that's just part of their roadmap. But they are, they, just because you're an instant don't mean you can't give them input. So I, I do challenge you when you cross over, don't go into the room acting like an enlisted anymore. Yeah. It's hard, but don't go into there thinking you got to wait to be spoken to. You got to wait to give your input. If you hear something, Everybody not thinking like you're thinking. You're the prior enlisted person. You're the GOAT now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're the prior enlisted now. You're the GOAT too. Say something. If you know that this may cause something to blow up, they're depending on you to come with it. I don't care what's on you. This not, uh, uh, uh. That's where your money comes from. But this right here, they're expecting you to correct the deficiencies. When they want something done, that prior enlisted mindset, come in here and try to fix this problem. Go yeah. over here and clean this up go like they're coming to you for the answer so that's what super dope is that you are now part of the go-to crew and i think in addition to that not only are you know you know it's important for you to speak up but i, I do feel like it's kind of like our our job in a sense to speak up in these yep. rooms because there are a lot of people who may be in those rooms that don't don't know what it's like to be on the ground running and working and because if we're all prior enlisted and we know that we were that we would used to be that sailor that is affected by whatever program that we're talking about right now then i think that it's our duty to speak up and say well hey i know how it looks on this level and i know how it sounds like it's gonna work but I'm pretty sure that, you know, you know, HN, whoever, I'm, I'm a corpsman, I can't help it, yeah. whoever I was a corpsman, you know, I'm pretty sure this is going to affect them in this way. And we're able to be that voice to really advocate for people that in, in experiences that we know how it feels when the change is made at the top and we're affected on the bottom. We're able to now put that input in and not to say that the, the other leaders in that room are wrong, but they probably just don't know. And so we're in a position that we can actually educate them on things that they just aren't aware of, or we see things that they're not even looking for. And so I definitely think like that's our duty to step up and say some of them, like, like you said, kind of speak up. And I'll tell you like one of my, the CEO asked me, cause I, I'll tell you my first deployment as an officer was the roughest deployment because I lost my Liberty buddies. Like I didn't have no Liberty buddies. I, that, James, you get me, man? I'm telling you, I had no Liberty buddies cause you like, no lie to let, like everybody else want to go to a bar, drink, cl like club. Like I'll tell you, I don't drink. Um, I don't club anymore. Like I don't do nothing. Like I want to go chill. I want to go live music. I want to you know, get my grown woman on. You know, so I want me to be cute. You know, and it's like I lost my liberty buddy, so I would like stay on the ship, or I'd be like trying to get all the person. I'd be like, okay, let me make it like an outing or something. Like it was difficult because it was like, man, nobody in here like likes what i like I, i'm a, i want to go to open mic night you know what i'm saying like boys like there you go like get it in and it's like i lost my liberty buddies because i, I especially think, like i do see that's important to talk about and now i don't even know how long we've been talking so hopefully we're not like just rambling but i do think that's a point that's really important to speak on when we talk about that transition of um, you know, going from enlisted to officer, because you and I, we had this conversation again offline and same experience. Like when I transitioned, you know, I was so excited and I was like so high off the goal that I've just achieved that when I, as I started coming down, I realized and I looked around like, man, I, I'm kind of by myself now. Yeah, and you're lonely over here. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I didn't quite, you know, fit in just yet. I didn't know how to fully be an officer. I didn't know, all I knew was how to be enlisted, but I couldn't do that anymore. So then here I am, you know, every day I'm showing up to work and, you know, I'm, I'm eating lunch by myself and I'm looking around and I'm seeing all like the first class mess doing something together or the, yeah, you know, yeah. the, the junior enlisted association doing something together and I'm like well where's the war room and they're all closed doors you know behind their desk or whatever they're doing and it was so lonely like it was literally lonely for me and it was just something that 
you know, I, I didn't expect, no one really talked about, but um, I think it, it's important to kind of recognize that that can happen, um, but then also it kind of leads to the point of the importance of kind of um, networking and building up, you know, that support net around you. Um, I think I was lucky in the sense that I am a mental health provider, so I was able to recognize what I was experiencing and kind of address it. Um, but, you know, I have that scope. I don't think everyone will have that lens to kind of, you know, put language to what they're experiencing. And it can really be a, a difficult transition when you realize that, you know, you might not fit in right away. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think everybody needs to realize when you cross up, you don't fit in all, right away because you don't see your, you don't see a prior list and that's okay. But what I'll do is a lot of mentors and leaders, uh, some people tell you like, don't fit in, but really you got to find at least one or two people and like find your teammates so you don't get lonely because guess what that mess with your mental state? You can get depressed real fast. You can go through anxiety real fast. You are not alone. You just got to find like where that missing link. Yeah. You got to find like who can I like at least like chill and kick it with. Like there's not, um, I can tell you probably like none of them, nobody in the wardrobe has ever been to my house. Mm -hmm. But we can kick it. We can kick it on the ship. We can go out to eat or something. But they're not too personal where you're going to come up in my phone. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to come to the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. There are some people that haven't done that, but we, we can kick it though. And I think um, one of the questions was, does it make it harder to interact with enlisted because of that? It does because when you do it, some of the people who have not prior enlisted, they just see it as fraternization, yeah. favoritism, and you not coming out your box as enlisted. So it does suck sometimes. Like I still have enlisted friends. Most of my friends are still enlisted. Same. But in the workplace, if you can't make those friends, some of them going to be your mentees, but you still got to be mindful because that mentee can still end up being a close friend because you're like, we're the same age. We can, we would have kicked it back in the day. Like, we can go turn off. Like, no, yeah. it, it don't work that way because now you're an officer. You cannot do those things anymore. Yeah, I saw someone ask, like, was the transition difficult, like, dealing with friends? And um, I agree. Like, right now, all my closest friends um, are still enlisted. Like, you know, that these are people I was, you know, I was in the Navy for 11 years before I transitioned. And so, you know, anybody who's in this room, you know, like you make really good bonds, especially as you kind of come from the bottom and work your way up. And so all of my friends are enlisted, but so what made it different, what would make it difficult is if we were, all, if we were stationed in the same place. Like, I think that I've been lucky enough to right now not be stationed in the same command with any of my friends. And so it doesn't make it as difficult, but there's still things, like you said, I have to be mindful if someone happens to be at the hospital, you know, maybe we can do lunch, but we can't like lock arms and link on, you know, we can't do what we normally do. We can't like, you know, cause perception is what, you know, other people are going to experience. And so if this is my good friend from 10 years up and we're laughing and joking and having a good time, yeah, that relationship is already formed and, and I'm not technically fraternizing, but for the person that's walking by and see me as Lieutenant JG and my good friend as HM2, it's, it's the perception is just it's not perception. right. And I can't, yeah. Tell everybody moving the mindset that you once had, because you can't lie. I know you was once there. Officers are perfect. They cannot fail. They cannot make mistakes. They do not do. Y'all can't lie. When you see, you like officer perfect. You're not supposed to do it because soon as you got in trouble, you was like officer so and so did it. Chief so and so <laughs> did it, and they didn't get in trouble. Now you're that officer. Now you're that chief. Now you're in the khakis. Now you're on the other side of it. If you do something, that gives your sailors the authority to do it because now that blame game don't go away but now you're an officer just like the chief mess in, a, in the wardroom they get blamed for why sailors make bad decisions so they're like oh they did it and then get in trouble so why you want to get me in trouble it's now you're in that ball game mm -hmm. you, you have to manage that um, somebody asked about being cpo or first class to me with the selection board when it comes to y'all packages and you're looking at somebody asked me the other day um hey i want to submit my package early but i don't have all my calls complete on my recommendations I'm like, it's not about just submitting your package, y'all. It's about having a solid package. When you look at the the, the precepts, and I and I and I, I wish I probably will later if we have time. Um, how many of you looked at the precepts and the selection boards that were last year's, last year's or the year before last, and saw who got selected? Every board releases who is selected. I'm gonna tell you what I did. I, uh, I will, when I was going through a Facebook stalk, <laughs> uh, fleet temp stalk, I wanted to reach out and be like, what did you do so I can make sure my pack is solid? I, I reached out to CW5s, 06s, because I, I didn't grow up fearing rank. Like, 
working at legal, no lie, working at legal was the biggest blessing for me because you're a, a, a E3, E4, you got a, a full bird rolling up on you like, hey, this is what I need for the day. You're like, mm, I don't think I'm supposed to be talking to you. But <laughs> in the legal world, it's so close knit. So when I went to a DDG and a lieutenant rolled up on me, I'm like, oh, you, 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 you not, not, not that you're nothing, but you're like, I'm not, I don't fear your rank because I was just working for oh, an admiral. When you at real so mill so they work with like in like officers on a higher level that it's like this is normal. Whereas on the little DDG, when my divo or my chief walked in the room, I just got tight. I, I don't want to talk. I'm gonna go back down to the engine room. Y'all let me know what you need because I don't want to be in the room. That means I'm in trouble. Like chief come around, you in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now you see if you see the chief or the divo, they're more making relations with the sailors versus like if chief or divo gotta come into the room, somebody done did something. Yeah. You know, that's not, that's not the culture anymore. So if, if I do advise, because I, I, this one thing is how many people have mentors that's really coaching them through their package? How many of you have sent your package to somebody? Raise your hand. H have you sent your package to be reviewed by somebody? If you have not, you can go, your designators, I know us, we have the LDLCWO page where you introduce yourself and or, um, he's, he's uh, retired now, but one officer frank runs that page but you have so many people who have set the boards on those pages introduce yourself tell them where you are tell them what you're looking for get a mentor that has set the board to look at your package there's so many things you can do to make sure your package hits all the wickets but we don't do that because we just want to go off okay it's good to go off what's online yeah. but it's still somebody sitting in that seat that's going to review your package and it's key things they're looking for for you yeah, I think for me, that was the biggest difference between when I applied the first time versus the second time. What was um, the difference? Because the first time I, 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 I did it on my own because I didn't, I didn't have the support of my command. Like they just told me I couldn't do it. And so I learned that I could do it. So I did it on my own. But I think that I was so, um, for lack of better words, I'm going to say bitter. I was like, I'm going to show you that I can do it. And so I did everything by myself. And, you know, it, I, my package was strong in the sense that um, we haven't really talked about fully like our, our careers as enlisted, but you know, I was a really, really great sailor. So sailor of the year, sailor of the quarter, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm getting, I was mapped to first class. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of what I do. I've got whatever, you know, number of awards because I've always been a really, really good sailor. And so the, the, the material inside the package was good, but the actual package itself was trash and I can just admit that now that I when I look at my second package versus what I put in the first time it was trash and mm -hmm. so the difference was the second time while I still was very much like I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it for me I kind of let go of like that bitterness and I asked for help and I didn't do that the first time because the first time I was kind of turned away so then I didn't want to ask anyone else um, but the second time I asked for help, I had my package reviewed by a lot of people. Um, even when I was doing it, I, it was three of us actually in the same command that was applying for the exact same thing. And we put in the, you know, the same type of package, but we didn't look at it as a competition. We looked at there it as go. we are going to support each other. And that's what we did. All three of us, we sat down together. We, or yeah, we sat down together. We looked at what we were turning in. Um, if we saw something that was off that, or if, like if we were looking at our package and if something was off in, in one or two, then we're asking someone else like, hey, which one of these is right? You know, which should this be fixed? What should we, you know, flip or, you know, whatever. Um, but I had a lot of, so many people put eyes on my package the second time around. Um, and that was the biggest difference for me because there were people who were prior enlisted and they knew what to look for. There were people that weren't prior enlisted, but there were officers that kind of knew what to look for with regards to like appraisals and things like that. Um, and so it was just super helpful for me to like actually reach out and ask for that support and just have more people look at the package um, versus the first time where it's kind of like, I know I'm the shit, so I'm going to put it in. The second time I was still the shit the stuff but um, <laughs> you probably listen time. they expect you to cuss don't yeah you? <laughs> the second time i was still hot shit but this time around like okay i was hot shit the stuff inside the package was hot shit but then also my actual package was right so there you go so um and james, james put it on there too um any other officers where you have different platforms please put that out there for the sailors but npc tells you like once those selection boards finish who was selected and like look those people it is important like it's it's it sounds simple because it is you don't have to 
like rewrite the wheel. People have been through it. People have gone through it. Like, and they're willing to help you. A lot of people used to be like, why you, you pour so much in the say, it's not about competition. I'm gonna do my part. I'm gonna eat regardless. I don't care whether you make it or not. I'm going to eat for me. I'm going to do what I have to do and meet the prerequisites. So in, in my year, when they promoted out of 25 of us, only four of us was first classes. It was all chiefs. So you have to also realize when you put in the package, you competing with master chief. You competing with senior chief. You competing with ITC, MMCS. You know, you're competing with chiefs. So don't come with a halfway package. Yeah. Don't come with a package you didn't put 100% into and expect to get selected. Because if you look at the results, 2,500 and some packages, 25 selections. Yeah. 12 selections. Supo be like, Supo be on and off, two, three selections. It's just like Master Chief, I had a DCCM out of the entire fleet, only two promoted? Like, as you go up, competition gets real. Put yeah. everything into your package. Don't let somebody tell you, well, oh, I made it off a of PE bow, or oh, I made it um, because I didn't have education, or I didn't have an MOBSM. Okay, they made it. That might not be you. Yeah, exactly. That, now, that's another point. Sorry, because now I feel like I'm getting my element. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I really want to talk about is, um, you know, you have to make sure that you put at your all into or make yourself are selectable. And I say that to say, like, you know, the board is going to select whoever is the best person and that part is out of your control. But whatever is within your control is up to you to really have that package stacked. And that's why Shakira just kind of started off with know your why. Like for me, one of the biggest things that I tell anybody who, who talks to me individually or who happens to like um, do the same thing and find out that I made it and ask me questions, um, I always make sure that while I'm building up my officer package and I know I want to be an officer, you best believe I was the, de the best damn enlisted sailor in my command, literally. Like I made sure that I was the best. I made sure I was sailor of the year. I made sure I was number one EP. And I'm not saying it's easy because like I just told y'all, I was going to school and I was going to my internship. And so, and that was more hours in the day than my job. But I always made sure that I was going to be the best sailor because my job was to make sure that my package was, was strong. And that was what was in my control. I didn't have control over what the board was going to say, but I know that I can control if I'm going to stay up a little bit later and, and, and do what I need to do to get this homework done so I can get an A so it leads, leads to whatever, to lead to the EP, whatever. Like, I did what I can do within my control. And that's going to mean sacrifice. Like, you may not be able to hang out with your friends this week. You may have to stay in the house. You may have to do an extra volunteer, you know, assignment or whatever. Um, but that sacrifice is worth is worth it if this is what you really want. Yeah, and that's real. Um, one of the questions was if you stuck between two routes, mm -hmm. like how do you know? Like you said to me, it's owning both packages and which packages is going to give you the results that you want after. Mm -hmm. Like OCS, like okay, I can tell you why I didn't go OCS. I can tell you I could have went state twenty one. I can tell you why. When you put and I tell people go to your drawing board, you'll see behind me. Like I have my vision board here. Um, and I, I write on it. I, it's different from most, but I write on it. Like I, have to, I have to see it, make it plain, make it clear. When you cross over, what does that look like for you? That will tell you like which package, because some of you, you'll put in a package because somebody said put in a package, but you don't know what that package come with. Have you really researched the package that you're doing? Because that's going to tell you if you fit into what they're looking for. Uh, Senior Chief, I saw that you put that, you got your review, you had your appraisals, your recommendations was good, but it's about, okay, when, when you get in front of that package, are you what they're looking for, qualifications, uh, billets that you picked? It, you know, do they care if you got education or not? Do they care if you have volunteer or not? Because you can get them, look, you can get your package review by high ends, you can get the tens, because we all know if you don't know, when you do your appraisal and get all tens, that's cool, but at the end of the day, when they sit in the room, they got two minutes. You got two minutes to convince the person behind that screen that you're it. Yeah. So that means you're, I tell LDOs for my community, when I review your package, I'm looking at your statement. All the other stuff is plug and play. If you miss that, that's on you. You give me your, your statement. You got two minutes to grab somebody's attention. Mm -hmm. When you're asking for other people packages, you want to look at their personal statement or their recommendation because that's what everybody's looking at. Are you going to grab their attention to stop or are they going to click that button and your package will go away? Yeah. Put time into your personal statements. 
put time into looking when your CEO or anybody asks you to draft up a recommendation, put time into it. A lot of us are, do a lot of copy and pasting. A lot of us do a lot of generalizing. You got to put time into things that are talking about your performance. That's where you win your performance. Yeah. And a lot of the packages that I reviewed over the last couple of years, like last two years or so, that's something that I talk about because I've had a lot of people reach out to me who have applied before and then didn't make it. And then they're applying the second time. And that's the first thing I ask about is what did you write in those statements? Because I, I also know people who apply multiple times and they copied and pasted the same package. And I'm like, well, obviously, you know, if you didn't get selected the first time, it's a really good chance that you're not going to get selected this time. And um, it may be why, because it, it you know, we kind of already know like the type of people that are putting in packages are probably going to be the people that are the EP sailors or it's probably going to be the type of people that are kind of doing the volunteer stuff. So then what sets you apart? And so what's going to set you apart is what you write down in that statement. And so that's something that I actually review first mm -hmm. whenever someone okay. asks you to look at their package. I'm like, yeah. hey, well, what did you, what, what's in your CEO endorsement? Because obviously, you know, for me, I wrote my own. I think for most people, you write some you CEOs. You write your own. Still not going to send you that. Yeah. I'm like, what's in your CEO's endorsement? And then what's in your personal statement? And for me, it was always helpful because some people didn't know, like, yeah, you can sell yourself in that CEO statement and your CEO endorsement is a chance for you to say something that's totally outside of your personal statement so that they can learn a little bit more about you, um, too. So that's something that I, I always like review. And that brings up something because a lot of enlisted, because I was one of those, I don't want to play politics. I don't want, it's not playing politics. You are in an arena where you have to be the best of the best. It's not about, you don't have to, I don't, I never, um, I don't want to put this in a, in a, I ain't never kissed nobody tail or slip. I ain't never did nothing to make it to the top. I ate. I use what I enjoy and I made it work for me. I love sports. So I coach basketball. I coach middle school. I coach high school. Uh, I, I, I got involved with the youth a lot. Um, I read to the kids. Like, it's not about politics it's about making the navy work for you instead of you feeling like all you're doing is working for the military Absolutely. don't if you don't have those checks guess what your competition had those checks so you can be like oh i don't want to work hard for an ep i don't want to play politics i don't want to be a part of first class association i didn't like how the association was ran so i went and ran for president took it over and made it what i wanted it to be I gave back to sailors. I did eval training with E5 and below. I created a lounge. We got together and did hiking. Like if you don't like something, get in the seat to change it. Otherwise, you're going to complain about it, but not going to do something. It's going to affect you later. Your eval will affect you later. Not making the military work for what fits your goals, will, will it, it'll cost you. So when you're writing these statements and you see that you're missing some blocks, some people will, you can go into an education, um, you can go into a degree now and with just your rank have educational credits. Yeah. I teach my, my third class and second class, like get in there and just go see what you qualify for. Cause you come with some credits just from a school, C school for some, just your rate period. So um, it is important that you get out of that mindset of playing politics. That's not it. It's making it work for you for what you're trying to get out here and do. Otherwise, Guess what? Between you, number one and number two, is because number two decided not to play the game. Number two decided not to make the game work for them. Number two decided they didn't want to go to school. They didn't want to volunteer. They just wanted to be great at their job. Guess what? The, everybody understand that being good at your job is what you're supposed to do. When you start ranking, it's what you're doing outside of doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be great. You're supposed to lead and train. What are you doing outside of that? I always tell my first class, outside of leading, training, developing, equipping, that's all the things I expect you to do as a leader. What else are you bringing to the table? When you do your appraisals and you do your uh, boards, the officers will ask you, what do you bring to the wardroom? Can everybody answer that right now? What, can, what do you bring to the wardroom? Right? You got to think about that answer because if you pause, they're going to be like, oh, yeah nine eight seven you got to come in that board with the quickness and no no this one i bring to the table ambition driven my background i'm sailorization this is what i'm bringing sme as a as an engineer it don't matter what platform i go to when i walk on the ship the ceo expect me to either know it or go find out where to get it and so if you start stumbling and you get in those boards but they write your recommendations or they're doing your appraisals you got to be ready for certain answers so if someone in your field hasn't given you a list of common questions you're going to get asked why you what do you bring to the wardroom 
you go, I had a female officer, she put a half, a cup of water that was half filled in front of me. And she said, how do you look at that cup? Wow. That was her only question. She's like, how do you look at the cup? Half full and half empty. It's a mindset. What type of mindset are you bringing to the, to the wardroom? With what's going on, I couldn't come into the wardroom thinking everybody's racist. I couldn't come to the wardroom thinking everybody hated me. I couldn't come to the wardroom and think everybody hate women. Some things in your mindset will have to shift when you transition over so you can make sure that you can provide what your sailors need. You see what I'm saying? Um, another, another question I saw on here was somebody who's putting in multiple packages. I know we talked about a little bit earlier. Whatever package works for you, if you can do all of them, do all of them, but be mindful because the, the military is small. You'd be surprised, like, somebody knows somebody that know you. <laughs> somebody knows somebody that know you. I can tell you right now, I've, I've uh, had two chiefs that I was firing to or E4 to that have worked for me. You know what I'm saying? So one, the tables do turn sometimes, but two, like, you just never know who knows you and what packaging. Sometimes when people know you dibbling and dabbling, they be like, oh, you don't know what you want. It's not the truth, but that's what they see. Oh, you don't really know what you want. You just want to get in. So what you going to do when you get in here? So just be mindful. I tell the person, Steve, just be mindful how you're doing and what you're doing. But pick which program. I have a GSM-1. He has, he's finishing his master's degree in nursing. He really wants to go through the um, MSC IPP, but he has to finish his courses. So he's like, I want to do LDO and apply for this. And I told him, where is your heart at? If you really want to go... If you really want to go into this, let your heart lead you. It's, that wardrobe not going nowhere. Go where your heart is at so you don't quit, so you don't stop, so you're not disgruntled, so you're not frustrated. Like, go where your heart is and, and, and know that it's okay to wait. A lot of people won't tell you that, to wait. If you don't know what you want, then you're just going to start doing everything. And I tell people, you can move a lot and you be moving sideways. I want you to move this way. I want you to move up. You know, and when, by you saying that, that reminds me, because initially, like we said, Shakira met me as a physical therapy assistant. And so at that time, I felt like naturally I should become a physical therapist because that's kind of the field that I'm working in. And so I was really like working toward that. But um, I'm, when you talked about like go where your heart is, like that stood out to me because I actually sat down with the officer mm -hmm. um, and I was telling them what my plan was and what I wanted to do. And I was telling them all about like my package and they were kind of helping me get started. But then there was some random like social issue going on in the world. I don't even remember what it was. And I went on a whole tangent about it. And he's like, are you sure you want to be a physical therapist? And I'm like, yeah, you know, because I'm still thinking I got to play the role and tell him what yep. he wants to hear so I can get yep. yeah. And he's like, no, but really, what do you want to do with your life? And I'm yep. like, well, yep. I kind of want to be a social worker, this, this, that. And he was like, do that. He was like, your package, yep. what you're doing right now, he's like, it looks good. You can, you know, you can put it in the package. It's a good chance you'll get selected to be a physical therapist. He's like, but it sounds like you want to do something else. And that conversation changed my life because now I am doing the job that I really want to do. And it put, I put so much more passion into my package because it, that's where my heart was. That's where I wanted to do. And so I felt divided, but just kind of you saying it, I think it's super, somebody needs to hear it because I needed to hear it. And it, it definitely changed like the trajectory of where I was going with my package, but in oh. such a positive way. And, and I think that's super dope. I want y'all to know that there are some officers, there's some master chiefs, like, I call, I rely on my master chiefs and senior chiefs even now. I go talk to, I got a dope CMC. Um, and I, I it's, some, see, it's some people out there that literally care about your heart. Yeah. Literally care about your career and what you want. They're not trying to, like, m manipulate you. They're not trying to say, like, I tell my sailors now, listen, if you want to stay in, I got you. If you want to get out, I got you. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, I got you. I just want you to succeed. I want you to be happy mentally, emotionally, spiritually. All those aspects. If you really don't want to be in the military, prepare yourself to get out so that you're not that officer or that chief that don't want to be in and it affects the sailors because you got you disgruntled. You know how many leaders I'd be like, man, if you want to, if you didn't want to stay in and help sailors, like just get out. Yeah. Like, don't make us pay because you didn't prepare. <laughs> you can't transition. You know what I mean? If you want to get out, prepare yourself to get out. If you want to stay in and be an officer, Get out here and eat. If you want to go and be in a cheap mess, get out here and eat. But no matter which route you choose, it's gonna you're gonna put in some work. Yeah. And it's the power of connections. It's that hundred percent. Somebody said about going reserve or staying active, if it's harder or not. To me, it's depending on everything is about what the board wants. 
Yeah. That's why I told that's why I told everybody, have you researched your package? Did you look into who got selected last year? Reach out to people. We are there's too many communities on social media where you can reach out to somebody and ask them, hey, can I see your package? What did you have? They don't mind. We're in the everywhere, like share information. You in we've been in quarantine. People at home, they got they, yeah. everything is virtual and email. Yeah, you can take it. I was going to ask you, um, Kidra, if you wanted to, because I know you said you had 10 things, and from even just from picking on them, they sound like some really good things. So maybe yeah. you can touch on those, and then if as questions come, we can finish. But I, I want to yeah. hear the points that you made. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, one last, we can, I guess you said ask questions. I just didn't want to lose it. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Context. Um, oh, yeah, it was you talking about some unmute me. Um, <laughs> so these are 10 things I want everybody to write down that I want you to hold tight. Whether you type it, whatever. Um, my first thing is mentorship. Who's mentoring you? You cannot, life by itself, um, me even as a life coach outside, I, I mentor more like victims who've been through some type of sexual domestic abuse. Um, but there, there, there's no age limit. CEOs, business owners, military captains, like there's no age limit on mental um, awareness emotional awareness who's mentoring you right now in life who's mentoring you professionally who do you call on when you're in a crisis if you can't think of somebody like mom dad grandmama cousin uh ray ray and them like whoever that's it's, it's it's cool but you need somebody that is in a place that you're trying to get to who is that so mentorship it's a big thing. Know your why. We talked about that. You got to know your why because if you don't, you're going to start shifting. I know somebody every week, they, they what they want to do changes because they don't know why they're doing it. If you know your why, you're going to keep putting that package in. If you know your why, if you run across bad leadership, you're going to keep doing what you got to do. If you get to a bad command, the whole world is not crashing down. Like If you know your why, you won't worry so much about the other side because you know why you're doing it. It won't stop you. So that's two. Three, expect change and expect adversity. It's not perfect over here. Everybody don't think that you're worthy of being over here. Everybody don't see you for what you did the last six, seven, 18. All that stuff is deleted. When you go to school, your entire record is pretty much gone. They don't care how good you were. They don't care that I was sailor of the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't care that I got EPs and I got six NAMs and who you were it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like James say, it's a lot of CL don't like Mustangs. Yeah. Don't like prior enlisted because the mentality or the attitude or we're not as receptive to everything. We don't nod our heads all the time and that's not <laughs> knocking anybody else, but we come with a little grit. We, we, don't, we, we come with a little hitter when you prior enlisted because you learn from the chief like, hey, don't, don't talk to me any kind of way. I'm going come, to come through. You know, so it's, it's true. Every CO, every ex, everybody's not team prior enlisted. Know that. Expect adversity so when it hits you, you know how to, you know what I'm saying, play defense. You know, as a coach, I say defense win games. You know what I'm saying? Defense win games. Um, but everybody don't like Mustangs. Everybody don't like prior enlisted. Some people, as soon as they know that you're prior enlisted, they kind of put you in the corner because they are more so worried about rejection. You don't feel what they're talking about. And two, your response, because we're more kind of like vocal with how we feel about certain things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see, so say, say another one is ownership. I told you, own your package. And then when you cross over, own your path from there. So mm -hmm. I already know my path as a LDO engineer, they want me to be a chain on the steamship. Jesus almighty help me. <laughs> no, but I know because of that, they're going to pick billets for me to build me up to that. So I'm not surprised that I'm going to a steam and field next. Because you want me to be an 06 captain. Yeah. If you don't know the route that is for you, predicted, you're going to be upset with the billets they choose for you. Like we said, both of us are going to billets that we did not choose. But because you're going into a community, if you are going OCS, stay 21, you, they want you to be the CO of a ship. They want you to be XO of a ship. Mm -hmm. You're going to do department head tours. You're going, they're going to plan a path for you to get your swole pin. They're going to plan out a path. You have to hit certain like wickets. Mm -hmm. So understand the path of your community so you can own it and, 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 and see if it's really something you want to do. Because like, like Rebecca and I said, like, you're not going to always have a choice to pick what works for you now. Like, I hit 12 years this month, June 23rd, I hit 12 years. Um, I just put on junior grade this year. 
And it's like, I still got eight more years to go. I got well, another ship, which is going to be ship number five. I didn't go shore duty. I had limb do. Uh, I had some limb do orders, but I haven't been shore duty yet. He don't care when you cross over your shore duty, your sea duty, all that stuff is zero. Go away. Don't matter. Yeah. You are now an officer and your path starts over. And so I owe five years at sea again. And then I get to go shore duty and then I go back to sea again. So be prepared that from the time I commissioned to when I crossed over out of the 10 years that I owe as a limited duty officer, seven of those years will be at sea. Mm. Seven of those years at sea. Everybody's not ready for that. That's not like the Corman community. I'm sure the medical is yeah. not as that tight when it comes to sea. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So on your path, on your path. Um, and, and, and two, with that, so I see somebody says on LDO, LDO board, mapped out the entire career. James, I got that same question. One of the other questions that you may get asked is they're going to know, they're going to ask you, what is your path? What is your career path? So research that. You need to know when you get selected, they want to know, do you realize what, what they want you to do? Yes. So go on NPC, research your career path, because that is a question on the board. That is a question on the board. I'm sorry, I was, before you skip to the next one, for the med medical side of the house, they'll definitely ask you about your specific, your job, like the specifics about your job. So for instance, for me, it was kind of like mental health. So they're asking me about the different modalities that you can use in mental health. Or if you're going to be a nurse, they may ask you what type of nurse or what, you know, what area you're going to work in. So make sure that when you go in there, you're prepared to kind of answer. It doesn't, it's not like really specific as far as the question, but answer like generalized questions about the specific route that you're taking because they'll definitely kind of ask you about that um and specifically because the board if if it's anything like my command that i went through um my chain my uh career counselors actually put the board together so i didn't have an opportunity to choose and so if that happens to you more often than not they're going to put a board together of people who are in the same field that you're trying to um, apply for and so they're already going to have a certain level of knowledge about that field and they're going to expect you to at least have a general idea of what you're stepping into so definitely along the same lines of what she's saying about um ldo but more so tailored toward the medical side of the house but same thing i think people do that because they want to make sure that you're not just putting in the package because somebody told you to because you want to make more money mm -hmm. they want to make sure you took time to research so if you have it you need to know 14 20 you need to know where the officer packages start from, whatever your community is, and research. Uh, I know we were asked, when was I, when was the LDO, CWO community founded? Like, mm. why? Like, what is the point of Mustangs? Why did Prime Enlisted even give an opportunity to cross over? Like, they ask you these things, so make sure you guys study. Um, the next one was sowing a seed. Everything that you get, make sure you reciprocate that. That that was my big thing. Like I wanted to get on here and like pour into people because I have a love. Like God gave me a heart um, to, to help and serve. But the big thing is I want to give what was never given to me. A lot of people, you gotta go, you don't, you're not gonna always get help. <laughs> so get that expectation out. You're not gonna always get help. You're not gonna always get pointed in the right direction. Nobody owes you anything. You have to get that. We signed up. And I had to grasp that really quick because I used to get frustrated and mad like, why do they want to just help me? Like I'm asking, they know I don't know, just help me. But because they did it, I had to go read. I had to go get in the books. I had to go Google. I had to go Google some things, you know? So the big thing is sowing the seed is helping sailors that are around you do the same thing you did. When you get selected, after you finish doing what you got to do, take care of those that are coming up that is trying to do the same thing as you. Sowing the seed is important. Yeah, I think it's one of my most favorite things. Like I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen at least one person that I talked to um, and that I've met with personally um, who has questions about putting in a package. But for me, that's one of my favorite things. Like I tell, you know, when I'm talking to my 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 um, coworkers and stuff, and they're asking me like, "Oh, you know, what do you do in your spare time?" And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, all my business stuff, yes." But I'm like, I probably talk to at least at least you know five new people a week. Um, who's interested in doing what I'm doing. And I never, I never thought that I would be the type of person actually to be some sort of like, you know, inspiration or mentor or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it really boiled down to that, that drive to want to sow that seed into someone else. Because again, I didn't have that. So exactly what you're saying, there are so many things that I wish that I knew that I didn't have. And so for me, it's a pleasure to be able to reach back out. Um, and you know, again, I think that is something that's, you know, if, if we can do it, why not do it? This is not a competition to me. The more, 
the more to educate. Like, get in the room. Everybody can't go to the wardroom because we still need a chief mess. It's, the yeah. chief mess is assigned to a mission and a duty. The wardroom is assigned to a mission and duty. Understand there's two missions. There's no one greater than the other. There's a lot of chief. Like, I have some heavy hitters on my team. Without them, there is no team. Without them, we cannot shift and move. So don't be upset if you're a path. I talked to my, one of my great friends. He a PSC. And I said, I, I told him, I said, Melvin, man, you don't belong in the wardroom. You belong in the chief mess. What you do, how you carry yourself, how you are, we need that in the mess. Be okay if you are supposed to go that route. Be okay if wardroom, you're supposed to go that route. Know which route you're supposed to go because everybody can't go to the wardroom. Mm -hmm. Just like everybody is not meant to be in the chief mess. Some people be like, you, you, how you think? I, I see some junior sages and I'll be like, ah, you need to go to the wardrobe. Yeah, you, you need to get on up there. Let's go. They come in and I'll be like, I, I already got your package ready for you, whether you, you think it or not. And that's one thing as a leader, I did challenge my sages is you will put in the package and I'll leave it up to you to not decide, but I'm going to print out the check sheet for you. I'm going to make sure you hit all the wickets. I'm going to make sure you push you on your east wise to get all the wickets done. But I want you to know that that opportunity is there. So, that was that was uh, one of the things I do appreciate everybody that's putting their information again because I know with so many questions putting our emails for you to contact us at us on social media. One thing I did want to point out um, that he mentioned that is important is on the board expect to get asked questions off the rip like hey a uh, seaman so and so walks out the CO state room at 2359 what are you going to do? You're asked scenario questions to see how you're going to think. And these boards are not, like, you have to really investigate mentally really quick. Do they want a political answer or they want me to be real? Mm -hmm. Because they know that you're going to give them politic answer. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put them on report. No, you're not. <laughs> you're going to mind your business about face, and you're going to chunk the deuces and be like, I'll talk to him about that later. I don't know what that is over there, but they ain't got nothing to do with me. I think that's another really big point to make is that, like, you know, I, I really don't think that the board is looking for robots. Like, There you go. James just said, don't tell them what they want to hear. Yes. One of the biggest things is you, you just have to be who you are and be confident in who you are because, honestly, if, if something – Put that mindset in you to put in this package then i think that's already kind of a really really good start and you really have to just own who you are and be comfortable with that because i think that i can speak for myself as i was coming up and i and a lot of people that i know they have this cookie cutter idea of what we think the board is looking for or what we think an officer should be we have to kind of let go of that in a sense and be comfortable comfortable with being who you are because that's what's really going to, you know, that, that's what they're looking for. They can easily read a million and one packages that look exactly the same and listen to people tell them the exact same answers. But at the end of the day, you know, they're looking for, for people because we, we may wear this uniform and we may, you know, represent something, but we're people uh, bottom line. And so you have to be comfortable with just who you are and what you represent. Easy day. I love it. Um, uh, the next one I had was give it 100%. You may be tired. You may feel like, oh, well, I asked him yesterday. Ask until they get irritated. Ask until <laughs> they give you the recommendation letter. Ask until they show up for the appraisal board. Ask, at, give it your 100%. Don't feel like, oh, well, he's so busy or she's so busy. They, nope, it's about you, 100%. I'm going to irritate you until you give me what I'm asking for. You know, sometimes <laughs> you just got to irritate people and poke, poke, poke. But if you don't give your package 100%, if you're not putting time into it ahead of time, if you're putting in a package this year, you should have started last year. If you put in a package next year, start this year. Like, make sure you're putting a lot of time into your package because people will, when I review packages and I see spelling and grammar, mm -hmm. I already put the package to the side. You didn't even take time to do that. I don't want to see it. Spelling and grammar would get you caught up on the board. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to people who study, and once they see that you didn't put time to correct the small things, Get it through admin, like let it go through. And that's the great thing about the wardroom. I tell Divos, you may not be the SME, but y'all learn grammar in school. You know how to edit some emails. You know how to edit some packages. I'm going to use that, baby. I'm going to use it. So if you make the little mistakes of not paying attention, that's one of the things in the packages, sometimes they tell you to put the date a certain way. Don't yeah. be like, well, oh, this was autocorrect. No, put it exactly the way they said. They do that for a reason. One, so you can't keep copying people packages, but there's always something different this year that was different than last year. That's the key. So don't scrub and copy somebody's package from last year. Something is different. Mm -hmm. 
Something that you have to attention to detail. As soon as they see that you didn't, you don't put yours in the trash pile. Yeah, definitely. I think that that's, again, another thing that I look for. Um, and it's just small things and more so because that second time around, because I had so many people review the package, anything, any feedback that someone gave to me for my package is now what I look for. So I'm looking, I go through the package and I see if, every, if all the dates are written in the right format because it's something that I had wrong the first time. I'm looking for is things capitalized where they need to be capitalized because that's what I had wrong the first time. I'm looking for definitely spelling and grammar. Like for when I'm reading, I know when people send me their package, like they get so frustrated because I'm a red pen Nazi when I'm reading that perfect, <laughs> that, um, that statement because it, you know, it, it has to be right. Like that, that's where you get the opportunity to sell yourself and no one's going to do it for you. So if you're not going to put time and effort into that, what makes the board want to put time and effort into you? And so I definitely think like what you're saying is like spot on. And I'm just over here like, yes, yes, yes. So I hope you guys are, I'm getting it and I'm already here. So I hope that you guys are getting it as you're yeah, like. Yeah, man, it's, it's important, man, that, that like, like she said, like, don't get, and, and we, it kind of triggers something else. You may go do a board. Do not go to a board without a completed package. Do not. If you're ready for appraisals, you need to have a copy, come with a folder, a copy of it, ready to give to them. When you finish your appraisal board, the first thing they're going to see is your package. If you do not have a package ready, you behind the game. Finish your package. One thing that I did actually is prior to my appraisal, I actually got a copy, scanned a copy of my package and emailed it to each of my board members. Um, because again, I couldn't choose my board members, but as soon as I learned who they were, I sent them my package. There so they you go. It a week prior. And be mindful that they may change and give you, remember I talked about ownership, they may make a lot of edits, but it's your package. You pick whatever they take out, shift, change. Like it's certain how I did my uh, statement. I got a couple of officers, like I never seen a statement, like I can't even touch that statement. I, made, I, I One, I was very transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very open with like where I come from and why I'm really doing what I'm doing. You can't change. It's not political. You can't just change that. I'm giving you personal. When you are writing your, your statements, it says personal statement. Don't give them political answers. They want to learn about the person behind the package. They do not want to hear a political, I, the, the Navy is great. Do you really like, the mili I wanted to serve the military all my life. No, I didn't. I didn't realize I wanted to serve the military, so I started skipping classes, and I wanted to just go take the ass bath. I'm going to be real with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a way out of class. So I, I want to make sure that you know, like, have a completed package, and your personal statements need to be personal. Mm -hmm. Not tell, it, tell your business, but they want to know about the person behind the package. Yeah. Because that, that helps them know, if, as an officer, you can actually uh, relate to it. So that, we already talked about, I talked about mental health, because if your mental state is not together, you're not going to be able to lead a department. Nah, you're not going to be able to lead a division. <laughs> That is my job. I am team mental health 100%. That yep. is my job. As you have to take care of you. If your cup is empty, how can you pour into someone else? You absolutely have to take care of you. So I, I approve that message. <laughs> mental health. Uh -huh, come on, man. I tell you, that's, that's important because I have a lot of like friends in the world, they break down. Yeah. They still suffer from anxiety. They suffer from um, like personal problems that they haven't battled yet. I can tell you as a survivor, of, 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 of child molestation, I still dealt with anxiety. There were times where I didn't want to go home because it was after nighttime. I feared being by myself. I feared men. I feared so many things that I coming into the military didn't heal me. It was really a place where I ran away from my pain. I ran away from struggle. I ran away from my issues. I ran away from my downfalls. I ran away. The military saved me because I was running. Mm. I was running. You know what I'm saying? So I still brought those issues into the military because I had those issues. My, I wasn't ready to tell my leadership that. I wasn't ready to, you know, I'm 30 years old now. I didn't even tell my mom till I was 25 what happened to me as a kid. You know what I'm saying? So it's things that your leadership or people around you don't know about you, but it causes you to maneuver a certain way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I lost friends early in my military career to suicide, you know, like on the ship. Being on suicide watch, I never thought I would experience those things. The military don't make people perfect. The military doesn't heal people. The military, does, it's, it's a uniform that people make a decision to wear, but it doesn't fix. And so your mental health is important. I need, uh, even though I'm a coach, 
I need a coach. I go, I need counseling. You know what I'm saying? It is okay. If you, if somebody told you counseling is not okay, I'm going to tell you therapy, counseling, you need it. I'm going to say, I need it. Everybody don't need it, but I need it. You know what I'm saying? And I do it not just for me, but it's not up to my sailors to maintain and know what I got going on. It's not up to my peers to maintain and know what I got going on. It's up to me to make sure that my mental state is right. So if you got some personal issues, I'm a big advocate for that. You know, I talk me too all day. I'm a big advocate because if you don't start addressing pain, it just builds up and you never know when that pain will release itself. I don't mm -hmm. care domestic violence. I don't care if it's abuse. I don't care if it's verbal. I don't care what it is. If it's a pain point and it is a trigger, we got to handle that trigger because you don't know what person you're going to walk walk around mm -hmm. or walk into that may trigger you and they don't mean it, but because they look like, sound like, seem like, you will get triggered and it will not, it will not end well. Your whole so, career is down the line. Whole down career down the line because you, you allow that, that trigger, that yeah. trigger. So it is important mental health, like, you got to address it. I don't care how old you get. I, I went to women's conferences, um, even, you know, as an evangelist, I went to women's conferences and I had 40 other women get up after me and be like, you know, I'm in my fifties. I'm in my sixties. I never told anybody, you know, I struggle with this mentally. I battle with domestic violence. You know, I, I'm going to work black and blue. It's a thing. What do you do with your sailors as an officer? You're going to have sailors dealing with black and blue. You're going to have sailors that's dealing with my spouse cheating on me. You're going to have a different set of issues and problems that are, are coming to your table. And now you're the person that got to figure out what's next. You're that officer that got to handle those tough problems before you can just tell the chief or the divo and then it's not your problem no more. Now it is your problem. Yeah. All right. So, and you got to be mentally ready for it. Um, we talked about this too. Um, what we are eight personal goals and achievements. What are your personal goals and achievements right now outside of uniform? What are you working on? What are you doing? I kind of can take my camera off. You see, that's my vision board right there. I write on it often. I want to do the chalk because I like to erase it and change it. But you see, that that's what I keep myself accountable to. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a personal vision, you will feel consumed with a professional mission that you'll feel like I'm nobody outside of uniform you'll feel like this uniform is who I am. And you kind of start maneuvering that way. You know, you go into the wardrobe and you'd be like, oh, he probably came from the academy. He probably came, like, he, he went through the academy grad. Or he, you can, I learned the difference between like OCS, academy grad, uh, JROTC, just how they maneuver and how they act. You're going to be able to see the different paths and how they, how, how they think, how they make decisions. You'll be able to know if the military is the only thing you have, you will lose everything for it. And I'm sorry, but at the end of the day, I am a advocate that family is first, but it's only first to you. I'm sorry, it's not first to the department heads, it's not first to the CEO, it's not first to the XO. It is important, but at the end of the day, they got a mission, they got something for you to do. So you have to make your family come first. You have to make your personal goals be intact and in your achievements and going to school. Because at the end of the day, the CEO has a job to do. The admiral has a job to do. He know you got an appointment, but at the end of the day, if it if he, if he wants you in that place, you're not making it to that appointment. Mm -hmm. You got somewhere to do, spouse graduating, miss, you know how many, you know, I say fathers all the time, like, I have so many brothers that missed births, missed anniversary. You know, when you miss something, we'd be like, well, well, you better come with a good gift or something. You better make it come with a biz or house. You better make up for that. But you miss things. So now that that it's, it's important that you keep your personal life intact mm -hmm. because yeah. now as an officer, you won't have as much time to put into it. Mm -hmm. You got to make that time. I, I talk to Rebecca all the time because she, I saw the YouTube channel, mompreneur, entrepreneur, run, like she has like three, four, four different businesses to run and worry about other people's mental health. Like that's a hero to me. That is a hero to me because we everybody can't do that everybody can't get to that point i follow her i admire her and that's why it was it I, i'll tell you i had to think about like would she have time because of how i see her <laughs> you know what i'm saying because and like i said being a go-getter in the medical field and then you run four like four different things mm -hmm. essential oils packaging she do her packaging she do her labeling she do it, everything she do it herself that does take time, but that because that matches her vision, that's why she do it. You got to have that same energy. When I get off work, I got coaching calls. I got speaker events to go to. I got things, uh, book, books to publish. 
I have to put that time into it, but that still has to, to, to find a place where family and personal goals come, they, they have to be priority. So that, that nine was family, nine was family. And then the last one is practice what you preach. As an officer, you are now held accountable. When you cross over everything that come out your mouth, I remember Commander Day, she was in Virginia. She gave me a phone call. A couple of African-American senior officers was like, everything you say now I'm gonna be accounted for. As an officer, everything you say will be accounted for. If you told a sailor you was gonna do something, you better do it. If you said like being late, that's not an option. Not showing up to a meeting is not an option. Not consider yourself junior officer if you below lieutenant or going and mustering whenever they like it's certain things you gotta figure out like what your CO wants from you. The first thing when I went in there is like this is what I wanna do. What does your CO expect from you? What does the person you work for expect from you? Don't go in thinking it's your show now because you're an officer. It feel good, like yeah. You know what I'm saying? I put on my wife's, I be like, yeah, I know I get you, it. you put on your wife. <laughs> You feel a whole different type of wife putting on your wife, you know, but at the end of the day, you still got to get out there and, and do the mission and the work that, that your job requires and balance everything else. But don't be that, that officer that don't practice what they preach because sailors hold, they, they hold your word tight and they hold it close. If you said something, don't never give somebody, I used to tell this to, to my junior guys, don't say, don't give somebody liberty when you don't have the liberty to give. Don't, don't give somebody something you don't have to give them. A lot of times we promise people things that we don't have to give them. That's personal and professional. Yeah. You can't give somebody something you don't have. You cannot give some, you can't give the Navy a hundred percent if you don't even, I t I'm, I'm big on, on, on personal, um, being connected personally. You can't give the Navy a hundred percent if you don't give yourself a hundred percent. Even if you do that, you're only giving them a hundred percent of what you do have. And people don't get that grasp. A hundred percent of twenty percent is not good. Yeah. A hundred percent of ten percent is not good. I tell people eighty twenty out of time. Like I'm gonna give more eighty percent to myself than twenty percent to the people that call my phone and and want to complain and be negative and talk about what was me. I can't. I give you twenty percent of that. Like I refuse to not give myself more than what I give people. Mm. I refuse to give the Navy more than I give myself because then I'm, I'm not doing the Navy any justice. Yeah. Make sure you manage that zero to a hundred right now. What takes over 50% of your day, 50% of your time, other people, business, Navy, negativity, drama, what consumes your time? That was the, the 10 things. So I really hope those were, those were keys that really help you guys. And you got that and it really makes you think. Um, we got some time here. I want to go back. I know um, some questions. I know initially when the question started, it was, it was well, what do we do in a day? And I, I know both of our jobs is really so different. And again, my job isn't even, it's so small and tailored to the community that I work in, being that it's in mental health. But um, for me every day, you know, I get up and I show up to work um, because I'm in an internship program. Um, so I show up to my internship. I'm seeing patients daily. I run groups and then I do individual patients. Um, and then after that is documentation. Um, I'm an officer of the day once a month if I need to be, um, but I really don't have a lot of tasks as far as um, officer related. Right now, my tasks are very well, well specific to my job as a mental health counselor. Um, once I get to my first duty station as a licensed professional, then my day may look different. And so the answer may be different in a few months. But for right now, I'm not sure if it's super helpful to a lot of people in the group because it's so um, kind of narrowed to my, my field. I think, um, for like you said, yours changed, mine changed depending on the job. But right now, I'm going through inspection. So I gotta be at work. I get up at 345, get to work. Um, because now the officer side, the sailors are waiting on me to show up. Mm. So you can't, I can't just come through the door, barely creeping in at seven, change and go to quarters. You know, but now I'm the one speaking, so I have to check emails. I have to, so really by the time they gotta be there, I gotta be there 30 minutes to an hour prior to. <laughs> so you, like I said, it's a different, it's a different thing over here. You, you're there earlier. So 345, we start drills. I'm also the SMO, which is the uh, ship's uh, maintenance manager. 
uh, management officer, so I run all the avails for the ship. So now I'm not just MPA, but I'm SMO. So then that job consumes my day. And then at the end of the day, I come back and do MPA jobs. So I get off probably around 16, 1700, um, probably sometimes later than that. So that consumes my day with going to quarters and then I'm in meetings. As an officer, you're in meetings from the zero seven to at least lunchtime, you're in meetings. Your work starts after people go home or after lunch. Yeah, that, that's true. PB4T, people training, meet for this, meet for a meeting for a meeting, a meeting, a meeting, a meeting before you meet with the CEO. Like, it's just meetings. So you you find it hard sometimes to catch up. And that's why you used to be like, why officers stay so late? They don't do nothing. There's a lot of things you don't see. All the admin, all the sitting behind it, it's the meetings that get you caught up and you realize, I haven't even checked my email and it's 1400. That's true. And yeah. then now I got to filter through a hundred and some emails. I leave my desk for an hour. I'll come back to 50 emails easy. And you're like, okay, do I go through this now? Or do I come in early and do it? I'm sure some chief, like seeing chief CMC, I go on leave and I, he, he'll he open his thing and be like, 250. Chris, I'm like, what? Two, and it's CC'd and I BCC'd you. Don't CC me. If it ain't for me, tell me. Sometimes I just delete it and be like, they'll come tell me later. But you get all the emails is your worst enemy on this side sometimes. So yeah. that is the big thing to me is is, is the email. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of people I can see on my screen, but James, I see you. Like, he yeah. Oh, James, like, because he already know. Yeah. He already know. Um, I like James. We thank you for your inputs, man, for just engaging. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Uh, and another, the LT, he said, bring business cards. Um, and thank you, cards, for your appraisals. I've seen that too. I think that's dope. Um, to me, uh, and this was Quincy, I know you asked about being on the pre com. One thing I did learn is everybody's like, hey, what if I'm on shore duty where I'm not leading? Or what if I couldn't get this call? Or what if I'm on the pre com? One thing I learned about board members, there's somebody there that can relate to you. They know that you're on a pre-com and you can't get this. They know you're not in a leadership role. So this, but that means that, hey, if you're on shore duty, you better have school, volunteer, presidential. A lot of people don't know about the presidential award that you got to go and document. And the presidential award is next over the MOVSM. If you don't know about the presidential, go Google it, enroll, and get that presidential award because now sailors know about it. So that's the new comp. MOVSM ain't even really a, a, a good like a, a yeah. thing to brag about no more. Get that get presidential. That presidential. Yeah. Get that presidential. If you don't know about it, go out there and get it. I and was so, up with my command with it. And again, that was one of those things yep. that staying you apart. So yep. knowing the different things that people are doing. So no matter what command you're at, somebody in the room can speak to you. So don't worry about that. Just maximize what you can do while you're there. Um, let me see. Um, this one is a is a is a common too because a lot I'm getting a lot of privates, Rebecca. That's what I'm reading. So no when you go to a command, don't tell people what you got going on. Sometimes you still have good chiefs out there that's not gonna knock you for one to go to the wardroom. You got some that be like, why you wanna go be an officer? Why you wanna go do this? Don't do that. You do. I'm be real with you. There's some chiefs that be like, no. I know my CMC was very supportive, but he too wanted me. He wanted me to be in the mess, but he didn't stop me. He actually opened up doors and helped me get to where I was going. You see what I'm saying? So it it is tough when you start letting people because some people create roadblocks. That's why I say sometimes you got to move in silence. Yeah. That, Until you I, need I, to talk, I, don't say nothing. Until it's time for you to like, I'm going to show you what I'm working with in silence. Be that silent killer sometimes because everybody is not on your team. That's the nature of the beast. It sucks, but it's it's reality that some people want you to go their way, one way, one yeah. opportunity. Yes, I think that was probably one thing that I, I really don't regret much in my life, period. But I think that's one thing that I wish that I could have did a little bit differently is um, initially just telling people the route that I was going to take because it did really have a, it, it made my, my path a little bit more difficult because, again, um, I, I've always been a great sailor, so I've always did what I needed to do to be a great sailor. But it was difficult because that conflicted when my name and my package was being put up for different boards and things. It caused conflict because the people on the boards knew what I wanted to do versus, you know, what, what, what I was doing. Because if you look at my, my, I guess, resume as a sailor, it looks like I'm going to be a chief. And so if yeah. there are things for like, 
you know, to get mapped or to get Sailor of the Year and things like that, I was absolutely passed over for some of those things in the beginning because people knew that my goal was to become an officer. However, there were also chiefs, and I will, again, speak into what Kuja just said, that advocated for me and said, you know what, she's a damn good sailor no matter what route she wants to take. And if she earned whatever this thing is, thing is you know, the, the map or the sailor of the year, um, then she's going to get it because she earned it. Yep. So um, I think that it is important to know who you can talk to because you don't want to do it alone. Again, that was my lesson, don't do it alone. But for me, I did, if I can do it a little bit differently, or I would say the way that I did it, because I will admit that the way I did it at first, again, was very spiteful. So it was like, I'm going to be an officer, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to, you know what I mean? So it was the way that I did it. And if I can do that differently, I will have a little bit more or a lot more poop and and kind of letting people know what my goal was. Yeah, I think, too, um, a lot of people think, like, I had I had a first set and I had to get on to him. Because I have sales, like, I don't want to go in achievements. I don't want to go in achievements. You don't realize you can be in that mess before you enter the wardroom. Yeah. Sometimes that's just the path. And so don't knock possibility. Don't yeah. knock one or the other. Neither one of them are bad paths. It's all about what fits your path, like what routine you want to go. But you can't come in with a fire and knock one because then that may be your only window of opportunity and you just crushed it. Mm -hmm. so I'll tell you, like, keep that personal. That's why I said, like, keep that personal feeling. Like, keep that silent. Like, you can talk to your friends and your partners about it, but still, even that, some people, and I learned this over time, some people are not your friends. They like what you like to do. Some people like the way you spend money when y'all go turn up. Some people like the way you party. Some people like the, the drama or the circle you bring. Some people like to do what you like to do. They don't really, like, rock with you like that. So still be mindful. But sometimes you go to the mess before you go to the wardrobe. I had people who picked up both. I had people who like, you didn't commission yet, you went through season, go through as a chief, and then you found out you got selected and that next, after you done put on. So you have to be mindful of that. Like don't knock your process. Mm -hmm. Be 100%, do everything you can do as a sailor and you are gonna put on khakis. Yeah. Some sort, whether you go chief officer, chief, go be Mick Pond if you wanna go CNO, you, whatever it is you want to join Chiefs, it doesn't matter for you. Yeah. Do what it is you want to do, but don't knock. I tell people, like, I don't know if I want to put it in a package. Don't close a door that's open. Yeah. Because I have friends, my top snipe now, he got selected. He, he decided not to select because he wanted to be there for the birth of his daughter. He made that decision. At least put the decision on the table and then say no. Don't say no before you like even try. If there's an opportunity, go through it full force and let the opportunity tell you no. Don't you tell you no because you just degrade your possibility. You just degrade. You just took yourself out of the ring. But go through every door. I, I, I told one of my men, I'm going to go through every door. One of them I'm going to get through. I'm going to go through everything. I'm going to get there. How? What? When? Why? I don't care. I'm, I'm going to get there. Go, I'm, busting, I'm busting it down. I'm trying to get through everything. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? So I think it's it's a big of uh, if you're in the I don't know phase, I, I really say if it was already in your mind to try it, go through it full force. Don't worry about what command you have in. Because I tell you, the 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 I've met uh LNCMs with no pins and it was crazy, but some they don't have to go to C. I used to be like, how you a whole master chief with no pin? Yo, like that ain't even fair. They don't have to. There's officers when we went to uh, Mustang U, and I saw officers teaching me, and you ain't never been on a ship. What, where? where, how? Why didn't I get selected for that? I had an HM1, one of my mentors, she's an elder, went through her whole career, no ship. Some people don't, they can't relate, they, they don't have to. Some people do not have to. So you got to know that there's somebody in that room that can speak to your situation allow the board to tell you no stop telling yourself no because some officer or somebody told you what you need go with what you have but with what you have go full force yeah with what you have go full force um i'll let that see you james now we got about four minutes left for the allotted time yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we got a lot of people's questions. Uh, my big thing is as you talk to your command, I know it's one, 
um, the right way to tell your command. You're trying to figure out what you want um, and press through the issue. If I've started my, like start your package, but you can still be like, you know, like my, my, they have to be open as leaders and you, you take this, you want your sailors to know that you are riding with them because they're making a decision. You're not riding with them because of the package. Like I'm not riding with them because they putting in the LDO. I want you to, baby. Come on, let's go eat. But if you don't want to do that and you decide, hey, no, I want to go stay. Okay, cool. Let me go find a state 21 officer because state 21, literally, there's not a lot of officers that I have ran into that went state 21. So it was hard for me to find packages or find access because I couldn't find like help for these sailors. And I start to feel bad. Like, man, where the state 21 officers at? You know, and a lot of people that I had was like OCS or they came in NROTC TC or through the Naval Academy. So it was different, but I tell people like, it's your, don't worry about how anybody else feels. If you go, if you base your package about, uh, based on how people feel, you won't submit your package. Don't worry about how people feel. Some people are not gonna like you. Some people that's gonna try to shoot it down. Like we said, remember your why and continue pressing on and doing what you gotta do. So I just, um, it's, it's not, we're not, we didn't come on here to tell you that it's easy. We didn't come on here to tell you that it's hard. We came on here to show you that it can be different and be prepared. Yeah. yeah. Be prepared. Like we appreciate, I just thank everybody who, who's on here. We put our emails in here. We like our names, how you see it on the screen. That's on social media. I know I've been adding people and, and we went live on Facebook as well. Then Rebecca, she's going to have it on her YouTube channel. So if you're looking for the video, you can go um, find it shortly. Um, if you, like I said, e you were an email away. We know somebody who knows somebody. Just in this room, we had at least four or five different um, designators or people who've been through something. So you have the help. Don't stop on your package. Go hard in the paint for yourself. If nobody gonna root for me, I'm a root for me. I'm my best cheerleader. Like mm -hmm. I rise for me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody can stop me. I stop myself. Nobody can tell me no. I tell myself no. Nobody can outrun or outbeat me besides me. And that's not a cocky thing. That's just where my mentality is. You can be better than me. You're you. I'm me. It's not a comparison. It's just I'm going to come here and I'm going to eat. So I just, like, it's, 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 it's big for me for you to not quit because of COVID or because of protests or because of everything. The, the protest, it is affecting. It affects me. I went to work and I, even, I told my boss, I was like, right now, I just don't want to talk about it. Like, don't, don't, I don't want to hear you understand. I don't want to hear that I can come talk to you. Like, let me be in my bubble so that I can get my mind together and address the stateless so that they know what, how to handle, how to deal. You know what I'm saying? Because it is real. It is common. It is, I'll tell you my first year I dealt with a Caucasian male called three of my, uh, two or three of my junior sailors, the, the N word. And it was more so of uh, like, we say it in our music, or it's common that black people tell black people that. So it was handled, but not so handled in a way that we wanted it to be handled. So it causes some, it causes, it was a hit for me. It caused me to look at like, it's not zero tolerance. You know what I'm saying? It depends on who's behind the judgment of it at the end of the day. And that's reality of it. Everybody not going to see it how you see it. And you got to be able to work through that. Everybody not going to feel how you feel about it. And you got to be, you got to work through that. If not, you're going to feel lonely, you're going to feel isolated, and you're going to feel like everybody's a bad person, and that's not the case. Everybody don't understand, everybody don't see it how you see it, and everybody's interactions are different than yours. So I ask y'all, like, keep grinding, keep eating, keep doing what you're doing, and, like, coming to this platform already shows us that, like, you want it. So get out there and get it, and email us. And uh, James, thank you for putting your information. LT, thank you for putting different officers that was on the scene. Make sure you add us on all social media. Link up with us, stay connected, and hopefully we can try to make this a, a quarterly thing if possible um, to continue to push y'all. If you think that's a, a great idea, give us a thumbs up and we'll keep making this thing uh, uh, happen so we can invite other people to, and keep people in the loop and connect you with those that are doing the same thing you're doing. Yeah. Thanks so much. I mean, I appreciate it. You, you said it all. That was a perfect outro. I think that's it. We're right on time. So um, again, I'll put this on my, my uh, Facebook, which is Rebecca Elaine. Most of my social media handles is going to be Rebecca Elaine um, spelled by the way my name is spelled wherever it's at on the screen, but I'll put it out in the next few um, moments here. So if anyone needs to refer back to the conversation, it'll be there. All right, y'all. Uh, I hope y'all have a great weekend. I pray for your mental wellness, spiritual, emotional, 
your peace, be in a safe environment, create a safe place for yourself. Um, oh, we send your email in the chat, Rebecca, because I'm sure all the messages they want there, I'm gonna put mine on there too. Um, um, make sure you 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 create a safe environment for yourself and those loved ones that are around you. You know what I'm saying? Be educated, but also be aware. And make sure that you know you have a voice. Make sure you know that you matter. Know, make sure you know like you are already qualified. You just have to prove to other people how qualified you, you are. You see what I'm saying? Make sure you know that your package is yours. Own it, take it, and let's eat. You see, if you follow me, like I, I say, we eat, baby. I'm coming to the table and I'm taking everything off of it. You know what I'm talking about? So y'all be safe. Um, DDG, what's my 101.navy.mil. Make sure you look for mentorship. Find a mentor, get out there and eat. And if y'all need something, let us know. Um, we'll email away. But I appreciate you guys. Y'all can sign off. And this closes out this show, baby. Go be great. Bye, Welcome everyone. to the wardrobe early. Woo <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.